Okay, so last week, we talked about patience, and I gave you two points. All right, so I'm going to go straight to it. We looked at the benefits of patience, yeah? So the third point that I mentioned last week and didn't discuss is patience helps us to finish strong. We believe that patience helps us to please God, just like faith does. Patience also helps us to produce harvest, okay? But patience helps us to finish strong. Now, how do, what do I mean by this? Now, let me say this. This is important. Sadly, not every Christian that started finished well. Okay, this is a very um, careful thing we need to think about. The Bible doesn't just give us teachings. The Bible gives us warnings as well. Okay? A good teacher would give warning, not just do this, do this, do that, but also would tell you, oh, well, if you don't do that, be careful. <laughs> That's a warning. So, but patience helps us finish strong. God wants us not just to start something by faith. He wants us to stay in faith until the end so we can see the reward. Bible talks about God is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. So the work of faith is a work that has a reward at the end. Now, we do not serve God or pursue after God so we can get something from him. That's not the main reason why we do things, but there is always a reward. Amen. Why? Because God is a good God. And so, because there's a reward that awaits the promise, you need patience to finish strong. All right. Scripture tells us, and you will be hated, despised by everyone because you bear my name. And for its sake, and but not a hair on you, of your head shall perish. Okay, it goes on to say, but your steadfast and patient endurance shall, which by, I start again, by patience, I start again, by, <laughs> that's not a good start, yeah, is it? <laughs> by your steadfast and, and patient endurance, you shall win, uh, I'm going to say that again. Amen. So by patient endurance, you shall win. A... Okay. So, yes, you go through different things. God understands that you're going through that. But you need patience while you're going through that in order to win. Because that patience also gives people a chance to change, a chance to repent. That was the part of produce harvest. Okay. It gives time. I, I love the fruit of patience. When you wait and God changes things around, it's amazing. You are, you'll be grateful that you waited. And that pleases God, point number one on that. So that's, that's basically what we're trying to talk about. Having the gift of faith from God, we, because we have the gift of faith from God, we then need patient endurance. You need these two things. Amen. It's what I was already saying. Your faith in itself is designed to produce fruit. But your faith cannot produce fruit if it gives up halfway. And that's why patience becomes so important. Sarah brought that up at the home group. Uh, she was trying to, all that she said, what I took away last week is the link between faith and patience. The link between faith, she kept on saying that. Very, very important. Jesus, when he went at the tree, I mentioned the fig tree, and he cursed the fig tree. And then the, the apostles came the next day and the fig tree died. And they said to him, how did you do that? What happened? How come the, the tree died from the root? He said to them, if you believe and do not doubt. In other words, believe and keep on believing. How many times do we ask God for something and we wait a day, two days, Three days, maybe a year, two years, ten years, and we're like, ah. Praise God. But God wants us to wait, even if you never saw it. Just keep waiting. Why? Because your waiting pleases Him. Point number one. Okay? Your waiting pleases Him. And that waiting is what will produce the fruit. And sometimes the fruit might not be in your lifetime. 
I promise you, friends, sometimes when I'm here worshiping God and having God, he opens my eyes to when I am dead and gone. He shows me Fever House Church when I'm dead and gone, and I'm celebrating that. There will be things I will not see, you will not see, but you've started something. Generations down the line, your children's children, children's children, as long as Jesus doesn't show up, will be making waves. My goodness. Don't be short-sighted to just think about here. Well, I waited, I waited. God, are you still not going to do this? No, maybe it's not good. No, 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 don't jump. There are so many people in the Bible, in the book of Hebrew, that waited till they died. They didn't see it. But today, they are written in in the book as people to be celebrated for waiting for the Lord. So wait patiently for the Lord. Amen. It says that you do not become sluggish. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. But imitate those who through faith and patience inherited the promise. Faith alone is not enough. Well, faith isn't enough if you know what I mean. (laughs) But whenever there's time involved, then you need patience. Faith alone is enough. For example, the man on the the thief at the cross, he didn't have time. (laughs) He was already nailed there. He's dying already. Faith alone is enough. He didn't need patience anymore. But because you're still going to live another 20 years, 30 years, you need patience. On your dying bed, maybe faith will be enough. You don't need patience. You're dying already. But as long as you're going to live the next day and the next day, now your faith needs patience. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. I think you've got that. Isn't it? Should we move on to the next one? Yeah, good. So, let's come to goodness. Um, we, we're going to talk about goodness. Now, actually, that's my wife's second name, uh, middle name, goodness. Yeah. Sometimes I call her cheesy goody. <laughs> one thing I want you to bear in mind and I'm going to do my best to squeeze it, they say, by God's grace. Bear in mind this word. This is all about to be. Okay? Just like Shakespeare. This is about to be or not to be. That is what? The question. This is very important. When we think about this word, goodness, straight away, what we're thinking about, what we do. But that's not what this is about, okay? I've jumped to the middle, and I'm going to go to back to the beginning. This is all about being, first of all. Bear that in mind as we carry on. So, goodness. Initially, I wanted to combine goodness and kindness together, but now nah, it needs, they both need separate attention. So, goodness today. Next week, we're talking about kindness. Right. First thing to take note of. The word goodness, we talked about patience last, we've just finished patience, goodness. The goodness is ag- agatosone, agatosone, some people would say that way. A Greek word, agatosone. There's two different words mixed together, and I'm going to come that together too soon. This word, you find it only four times in the whole of New Testament. Only four times, which is very interesting. Let me say something here. The word, when I come to kindness next week, the word, the Greek word for kindness also can be translated as goodness. Okay, the Greek word for kindness will also be translated as goodness. But the Greek word for goodness is only translated as goodness. It's not mixed with any other thing, and that is an interesting thing. Why is that? It's because goodness here is about intrinsic goodness. The word intrinsic simply means inherent. It's all about, okay, let, I'll break those words into two. You know the word agata? Yeah, actually, that's where this word is taken from. So the first part of that word is agathos. Okay, agathos simply means good. So maybe, maybe your name is Agatha. 
<laughs> Don't tell your mom I changed your name. <laughs> I'll be in trouble. <laughs> um, again, good means intrinsically good. I love that part. Good in, oh dear, good in nature. Now, you see where this is heading straight away. It's about being, not doing. There is a doing, uh, but that doing comes as a result of the being. Okay? Not a, be, not a doing that will co- make you then become good. No, you become good, and then from the goodness comes a doing that is now dis- described as kindness and all that, many other things. Praise God. I hope you're following so far. Now, dictionary did its best, but let's just look at dictionary. Dictionary says, it says, goodness is the quality, I highlighted, forget the rest for me, the quality of being. Okay? The quality of being well, kind, helpful, honest. I love this word. The state or the quality of being good. Euphemism of God. So, I just wanted to get this information out of the way, and then we now look at this. Now, to understand goodness, you, you see, dictionary couldn't give the best job. Dictionary definition of patient last week was brilliant. I mean, that could be a message in itself. But not for goodness. Why? Because this is beyond human. Right? So, for that reason, now if you write in, Get your pens ready for the point. Two points on about goodness. Number one, God alone is good. And add to that, we are not. I know people think they are good because of what they do. Again, take note of what I'm saying. It's not what you do that makes you who you are. What you do cannot make you who you are. Or else, uh, an eagle that does not fly and pecks on, around the ground will think he's a chicken, but he's still an eagle. Does that make sense? And for the fact that a chicken managed to fly to the tree doesn't make him make that chicken a bird, you know, like... An eagle. He could dance around with the eagles, but he's still a chicken. So it's about who you are. Now, let me come back to this. Only God is good. Friends, do you know who said this? God. When God himself, in the human flesh, could even disqualify himself because now he's in a human flesh. I don't even want to. That, I find that scripture fascinating. But I know what he's saying. He was trying to give us a clear picture. It wasn't about him because he hasn't sinned. He hasn't done anything wrong. He was born of God. But he was trying to deal with the mentality of the man that was coming to him. It was the rich, young ruler that came to Jesus. Now, this rich, young ruler has obeys, he does things. He is defining himself by what he's doing than rather than who he is. So he says, what must I do? Let me show you. It's in the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse from verse 6, 6, 16. It now says, now, now behold, one man, that's the rich young ruler, said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? In his mind, it's what I do that gives me eternal life. Now, he is Jewish. Under the law, that's what they knew. So he wasn't still far off, but Jesus wanted to introduce, he's introducing new teaching, a new kingdom teaching. That's why he said what he said. So he said, here is Jesus, why do you call me good? And he says, no one is good but one. That is God. But if you want to enter eternal life, keep the commandments. So he still, it's an interesting conversation here, isn't it? 
He still answered his question to his level, but left for us a bigger understanding of life. That what you do does not make you good. Only God is good. Or else, everyone who followed the commandments is good. But that's not what makes you good. Praise God. Watch this. This means God cannot, what he's trying to talk about is nature. Remember what I went showed you in the dictionary? It's about the intrinsic nature. Okay? It means God's nature is a good nature. He cannot do evil. God cannot even think evil. I know sometimes we say, well, God did this and God did that. We attribute quite a lot to God that he didn't. Now, God might step aside for things to happen. Okay? <laughs> He can remove his hands of covering in a fallen world and a broken world and bad things could happen to people and happen in situations, but God does not do evil. He actually cannot produce evil. God made the heavens. He made the earth. He created everything. Every single thing he did was good. Amen. Because it comes from his nature. His nature is good. Watch what this scripture. James says, let no one say when I, when he is tempted, he is tempted by God. Why? For God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he himself tempt anyone. Rather, each person is tempted When he, that person, is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. What is this? Remember the series we're doing is called the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, what Paul was talking about is, if you listen to your human desires, you produce evil. If you listen to the desires of the Holy Spirit, you produce love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, all these things we are studying. And he made it very clear, we have two desires in us, the Holy Spirit and then the human desire. And he says, please listen to the desires of the Holy Spirit. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Let go of your human desires. Why is this? Or every human being is already flawed. If at all there was a human being that was good, apart from Jesus, I was Adam. In terms of straight away good in creation. And so when Adam sinned, every human being, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short. So we are corrupt. All are corrupt. Praise God. So it says, do not be deceived, my dear beloved brothers. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above and comes down from the father of light, with whom there is no variation. I, I made that capital for a reason. There is no variation or shadow of turning. Variation means he might have a chance of changing sometimes. You know, that means he is good, 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 but maybe one day he just became bad for a second and then come back. There is none like that with God. He is good from the beginning. It's still going to be good forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Did I miss any ever? (laughs) Praise God. And he will not change his nature. God can change his mind. There's a different thing there. Come here, King James. Oh, favor has us. You guys should run for 20 years and he can change his mind. Oh, no, no, no. 100 years now. He changed his mind. But everything he's doing is good. Praise God. I think that's good justice there. Let's we can move on. Are we good to move on, friends? You got it? You guys are helping me. Just note this. Goodness flows from who we are, not from what we do. So take note of that. It flows from who you are, not from what you do. Why? Because it's an intrinsic quality rather than... um, 
Is it what's the opposite of ex intrinsic? Extrinsic. extrinsic. Oh, I'm learning English on, on the job. Um, okay. <laughs> so it's not an extrinsic quality, it's a, an intrinsic quality. All right. In the book of Matthew, the Bible says, Beware of false prophets, those who come to you in sheep's clothing, but within, inwardly, they are what? Revenous word. So ex externally, what they're doing might look okay. But internally, mm, it's not goodness. It might look good, but it's still not goodness. All right? He says, even so, every good tree, Jesus is the one talking. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 17. Okay? Jesus is, he said, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree, take note, cannot produce bad fruit. Nor can a bad tree produce or bear good fruit. This is important, and he goes on to say, by their fruits you should know them. Why is this important, friends? If the, our quality, who we are internally is good, then what we then do will be goodness. When we yield to the instructions of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is good, is God. Remember, the Holy Spirit is not a servant, it's, it's God. When God, the Holy Spirit, instructs you on what to do, that thing you're doing is goodness. Amen. Even though sometimes people might not see it to be goodness. It doesn't even matter because the where it came from is what justifies goodness. Or else, the devil will do good works and then he'll call it goodness. It's like the devil started charity. He's helping the poor, helping the weak. And we say, oh, wow, goodness. No, no, no. Don't be fooled. That's why I read to you, don't be fooled by false prophets, Jesus said. The world is preaching, be kind. Do not be fooled by that. Now, they are talking about the extrinsic qualities. But those extrinsic external qualities are important, but we should not focus on that first. Okay? Don't focus on just being kind. Oh, well, we just need to be kind. I'm going to talk about now next week and separate the difference when the world say be kind and when God say be kind. It's not the same thing. Okay? Our focus is first of all on who we are, then from who we are, we produce the qualities that God wants. Amen. Okay, point number two. Woo! Good. God is good. You're going to like this one. Did I say we are not good at all? Guess what? We are actually good. <laughs> But who makes us good? Christ. Christ. How? By faith. I was expecting you're going to shout it before me. <laughs> so in our human nature, we are bad. As bad as it can come, as you can think of. But by faith in Christ Jesus, we are now intrinsically good. It's not... But everything, that's why faith is an important quality. Okay? You're in, 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 in I'm going to, if you see my tongue on the floor, <laughs> because I've bit it out, <laughs> it's going to be interesting with this word, intrinsic. We, we are inherently, better, we are inherently good by faith. Okay? That's why faith is a very, very important attribute. And that's why without faith, you cannot please God. You cannot make it to heaven. There is no eternal life without faith. There's nothing. Because only what is good will be in heaven. And it's your faith that brings you to that quality. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I thought you were going to die. So you, you're tapping. Your, you're rejoicing like me. Well done. Because I, I was getting excited myself and I saw her doing. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Amen. Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 8, for once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light, 
For this light within you produces only what is good. This light within you can only produce what is good. Listen to the Holy Spirit. You will never get it wrong. Never. I promise you, the day you get it wrong when you listen to the Holy Spirit, come and take your money back. Which money? I don't even know. <laughs> Maybe I should give a better <laughs> oh, promise. God will never mislead you. Everything he says is good. His directions, his instructions, his, everything is good. And if you believe and have faith in him, you will be producing goodness for the rest of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the fruit, that's the light of the Holy Spirit, consists in every kind of goodness, uprightness of heart, and trueness of life. Father, we really thank you, Father. Oh, we give you praise, God. Friends, in conclusion, be good and then do good. Okay? Can you just say that after me? Be good and then do good. Focus on being good. What does that mean? Focus on your faith in Jesus, your knowledge of Jesus, getting to know him more, getting to love him more, getting to serve him more, staying close to him because everything you do in that place of knowledge of the Son of God will be goodness. Okay? Did you notice this message is not about, no, be, open the door for your neighbor. Opening the door for your neighbor is good, by the way. But you're doing that not because it's just a nice thing to do. There's no niceness in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Goodness, which is an intrinsic quality. Let me now end with this scripture and we close. Remind the believers Paul was saying in, to Titus in chapter 3 verse, from verse 1. To submit to the government and its all officers. But watch this. He says they should be obedient, not to the government necessarily. Obedient to Jesus is what he's talking about. Always ready to do what is good. Obeying the government doesn't make you good. Okay? But obeying God, if he says obey the government, is what makes you good. Because there might be a time God will tell you to disobey the government. And then if you do that, that is good. So the key thing here is obeying God. Praise God. They, they must not slander anyone, must not, they, and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle, show true humility to everyone. He goes on to say in verse 3, once we too were foolish, disobedient, again, disobedience to God is what he's talking about, we were misled and became slaves to many lust and, ple uh, lust and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy, and we hated each other. Verse 8, this is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to insist on this teaching so that all who trust in God will devote themselves to what? Take note of this word. All who trust in God, that's the people of faith. So it's first of all your faith that makes you intrinsically good. Then from there you now start doing good works. Okay? Praise God. You got that, yeah? Yes. You got it. I know you guys got it. This is a trustworthy teaching, he says. And he says, our people must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others so that they will not be unproductive. Who here wants to be productive? Remember, you are good because of Jesus. You are good by faith in Christ. You're not good without faith. So don't give up your faith. That's only what makes you good. And you can only produce goodness if you stay in faith and you listen to the Holy Spirit. Let's stand up. Amen. Oh, we thank you, God. Why don't we just thank God for that intrinsic goodness that you have by faith? Why don't you just give God praise? Just thank him. 
In ourselves, we are not good. But in him, we are absolutely good as gold, if you want to think, call it that. He is the one that gives us life. He is the one that made it possible that everything we can do, we produce. And that's what he wants. He wants that goodness to flow from you. So ask God, help me to keep listening to his word, to keep listening to the Holy Spirit, to keep being obedient so that goodness will keep flowing from me to my wife, to my children, to my family, to my loved ones, to the people on the streets, to the nations. He really wants to show his goodness. But he can only do it through you. Amen. Oh, well, thank you, Father. Lord, may your goodness continue to be showered upon us. And may your goodness flow from us as well to the rest of the world, to our loved ones. We thank you, God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Jesus.